Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about the rear damper for, from the Automatics A12. As you can see I've got one in my hands here. Um, let's just go through the basic design of it first of all. Um, it's a machined uh, housing with two rods inside so in fact the way it works is very similar to a conventional straw damper on a 12 scale car. So we've got rods inside tubes with silicon fluid smeared uh, onto the rods and it's the uh, the shear force um, across the fluid in the gap uh, that create, provides your damping uh, for the car. The difference is a traditional 12 scale straw damper uh, works using a telescopic motion like this to give you side to side damping. Um, this particular design works using rotation so it's actually the rotation of the rod inside the tube that uh, provides the damping um, and there's obviously this little uh, lever arm on the end here which connects to the rear end of the car uh, or the, the pod assembly uh, to actuate that movement uh, and provide your damping so obviously you can change the viscosity of the fluid that you fill this with um, to give yourself more or less damping depending on what you require um, it's probably useful to point out we in the UK we build this damp unit without any o-rings on it so you can see here I've just got the rod inside the tube no no o-ring on the end um, this doesn't really affect the performance uh, of the unit um, it just makes it a bit easier to build um, because obviously when you try and push this rod down inside the tube there's going to be an air pocket at the bottom of the pocket that needs to escape and that air has got to work its way up the side of the shaft which is very close fitting so if you use the o-ring uh, you have to kind of move the o-ring to one side to, to allow it to bleed and it takes quite a long time to build the damp unit uh, we've actually found if you just omit the o-ring don't fit it uh, and just slide the rod in um, it's a lot quicker to build the damper you might have to rebuild it more often because there's there's no physical seal on the end of the rod so the fluid will leak out over time um, so you will need to rebuild these more often running them this way uh, to, to maintain their consistency but um, it's a small price to pay for, for ease of building use really. Um, the kit is supplied with 100k fluid for this um, which is fine to use uh, if you're kind of running in low grip conditions or you want the car to be quite safe and easy to drive but we've we've found typically in the UK on our tracks on our carpets with our tires we're running down towards kind of 50 60k uh, fluid as a as a fairly good base setting um, but in doing this what we've actually discovered is that just because you might build a damper with say 60k fluid um, that doesn't necessarily mean that your damper is going to be exactly the same damping wise uh, as someone else's damper that's also built with 60k. Um, the amount of silicon fluid that you smear on the on the rod, uh, you know how good how good your coverage is, the the close fitting nature of the tolerances inside these parts, you know it, it all stacks up to mean that it's quite easy to introduce variants uh, between builds. Um, and even side to side, uh, so you've obviously got two rods in 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 uh, two holes. So theoretically, you could get different damping on each side of this, which doesn't actually matter. That won't tweak the car or or anything because obviously when the pod twists, one of these rods twists in one direction and one of them twists in the other direction. So actually, your your overall damping won't be any different side to side it will be the average of the two damping amounts you've got uh, on the two rods so um, yeah it's not it's not really that much of a concern but I would say for consistency and peace of mind you want to try and get it the same both sides if you can um, so we kind of decided that we needed a way of accurate, accurately measuring uh, this you know putting a number against it because we kind of came to the conclusion that just specifying the fluid uh, that we're putting in isn't an accurate enough way of defining what damping we're running. So uh, we've actually come up with quite a neat little idea. 
uh, what we've got is one of these, uh, a Sky RC diff analyzer. So obviously the, these were originally de designed and made available for uh, testing the, the torque or the, the viscosity inside of an electric touring car diff. Um, so we've actually started to use this um, as a way of checking the damping inside this damper. Um, so this little unit just plugs into a five volt USB power supply. Um, it's got a, a motor inside it and a digital display, uh, which gives you an, it's kind of an arbitrary number. It doesn't have any units. It's just a, it's almost like a, a random number. Um, but obviously I think it's, it's measuring the current. Uh, so there's probably a little ammeter inside this. So it's giving you a offload. It's giving a reading of about 65 to 70. So it's important to take that into account when you're when you're using this for what I'm about to show you. So uh, to make this um, compatible with the damper, we've just uh, drawn up some neat little adapters. They're just 3D printed R RP adapters with rub screws in to tighten it down onto the flats. Now you can see when I spin this up, it's not quite perfectly concentric and round. Um, we do intend to get some uh, metallic versions of this part made where we can properly uh, get everything concentric and, and spinning uh, without a wobble but um, I've tested this and it's it's good enough for the job so um, that's good um, so what basically what we do once we've got a damper built and ready um, we just slide the lever arm into this little pocket at the end here. Um, do make sure that the side of the, the checker adapter isn't rubbing on the face of the, the damper. So just make sure there's a little gap, gap there, as you can see there. And then just push the button. So you can see there that's reading about just over 100, 105. Does, the number does tend to fall and then stabilize. So we're just under 100 there on that on that side. If we go to the other side, that's just under 100 as well. So I think we can fairly confidently say that's reading just under 100. This is actually the damper I used uh, when I raced at uh, Millet's RC circuit races at the weekend. The car ran very well there, had lots of steering. Uh, and yeah, typically we are finding that using this this uh, diff checker to check the damping, you, you should be aiming for a, a damping value of around 100, maybe a, a bit more than that if you're running in low grip, uh, kind of club level grip, you, you might want to go up a bit heavier, so kind of 110, 115, but as the grip and traction comes up in the carpet, in the track, uh, you can reduce the damping and it frees up the rear end of the car a bit. So yeah, as, as you can see here, I was running just under 100 at the weekend and that seemed pretty good. Um, just while I'm on the subject of the damper, there is a little trick you can do with the car. Obviously, it, as a as a built unit, this can be installed into the car from the underside. So I'll show you the underside of my car here. So it just drops into this pocket, um, and obviously the the rod arms pick up on these little pins here. Um, it can be quite difficult to slide this in. Uh, the reason being the the little set screw that's used to set the droop. Sometimes if if you get a bit of excess thread lock on that or um, any debris build up it can get caught on the, the inside of the hole in the back of the battery tray here so actually what we've been doing is just running um, like a 1 8 uh, reamer through this hole or you could use a like a 3.2 millimeter drill bit just to open it out slightly give some clearance um, it doesn't need to be close fit into the drip screw because obviously the, the damper is held in at the sides using screws through these holes and it, it locates using its edges around the edge of the uh, battery tray there as you can see so you only need clearance through this 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 hole so you can open that out and then the uh, the damper should drop in quite nicely if you do that so let's give it a go
tricky bit is just getting the rods aligned like that and then it just drop in like so and then obviously it's retained from the top side using screws in each side here and here.